What is going on guys? Welcome to Gums Videos. My name is indeed Kyle Gilbert and tis the season to be jolly. Welcome back to my WTF series review guys. If you guys are new here, this series is something that I really just really enjoy. But there's a lot of times in this series that I just get really mad and just wonder what the fuck am I watching? And this is one of those times, so obviously, like I said before, it's the season to be jolly, so I watched a Christmas movie. And for those who clicked on this video, not realizing there was a fifth Home Alone movie, well, guess what? There's a fifth Home Alone movie. And it's titled Home Alone, The Holiday Heist. This movie is something else. Um, on countless occasions, it references the first movie when it comes to traps, when it comes to, like, shenanigans, fears, and stuff like that. And a lot of those times they reference the first movie, they kind of insult it as well. Saying, like, oh, no one would fall for that trap. Or, oh, look, remember this? Look how silly that was. That's so dumb. The more they kept doing it, it was just getting a little more frustrating. It's like, hey, remember the first movie? Well, how much that sucked, didn't it? With the blatant callbacks to the first movie, and the... Poor character development, like the main character, the kid, I don't even remember any of their names, so I'm just gonna go with that, because the characters are just so bland, you don't even care to remember their names. The main character, the boy, his main characteristic is he's very shy and afraid of a lot of things. That's the entire character, and that's what his character is based around. Of And yes, he's creative. And that's basically with all the Home Alone kids, because you gotta be creative to, be, to set up traps. So the only unique thing is that he's shy, and, you know, he's scared very, very easily. The daughter, the, uh, she's just your typical angsty teen that hates the world, hates everything, is always on her phone listening to music. The, the parents are very stereotypical. They end up going through a move because, guess what, one of the parents has got a better job and one of the parents is like, hey, let's do this, let's do that. And all the kids are like, no, no. It's very run of the mills. In the first 15, 20 minutes of the movie, I was just quoting what they were going to say. And nine times out of 10, I was pretty spot on. That's pretty bad. Wow, well, that's unfortunate. This movie is just garbage not not one time that i really laugh i smiled but that was towards the end and no it's not because the movie ended there was one time i smiled i'll get ba back into that in just a minute the traps were not funny the humor with the dad was not funny the dad was the closest one to get me to really laugh but he didn't make me smile because it was just so cliched i feel like the dad could have had some um funny moments, but yet again, I was quoting what he was going to say beforehand, and I'm like, wow, he's going to say this, wow, he's going to say that, and he said those things. If they were just a little bit different with the dad character, I feel like his character would have been just a lot better. Going back to the traps, the traps in this movie are just so over-convoluted, to say the least. Like, the entire time the traps were going off, I'm like, okay, I could see why he would place that, but yet... The chances of yet one of the thieves doing one of those things is very unlikely. One of the thieves was trying to sneak in the house through the window. She struggles to get in, but uh, now she's stuck in there because uh, he like kind of closes the window on her head. And then he had to predict she was going to grab a nutcracker. That's kind of sprung up a trap to like kind of spray something down on her. She grabs a chair to spring up another trap. It's very specific and it's very unbelievable you gotta do one thing to set up another trap to do another thing to set up another trap like one of the other thieves when he sneaks in what made you think that he was gonna close the door because he ends up closing the garage door and that causes the, the freaking motor for like a snow plower to turn on shooting uh, like little like bb things at his head like what made you think he was gonna shut the door like if he didn't shut the door that entire trap is pointless so it's too specific, and that's why the traps were not that entertaining. And you got your stupid character, you got your love lust character, then you got your greedy asshole character for the thieves. We've seen it many times. We've seen it one, especially two. We see we've seen like five thieves in the third movie. The fourth movie was just a callback to the first two movies, and then this one is kind of a mixture of one and three it, with the thieves. It's it's very stupid throughout the entire movie. People, the kid, the child, were joking, 
fearing this ghost that's in the fucking house. There's no ghost in the movie. They kept retracting the story because of his fear of the ghost. Like, it got so old so quickly. It, it's fucking dumb. It's really annoying. The, the character, Kevin, in the first two movies, specifically the first one, he was afraid because of the basement, because of the little heater thing. That's scary, that's reasonable, but every little fucking thing that this kid sees, he cries ghost. It was so obnoxious, so dumb, such a waste of my time. Literally, in the first 50 minutes of the movie, I counted at least that they cry, the kid alone, the kid, not the parents, not the child, not everybody else, just the kid alone, said ghost 40 times. It was obnoxious. Dumb. And the amount of times it, re it retracted from the main story it was bullshit. There was no real subplot there because we all knew it was not a ghost. It was just something stupid to keep the plot going. It was. This is a TV movie. And you could tell they're like, okay, we got to fill, fill in another 30 minutes to make this an official TV movie. So they're like, what do we do? Let's add a subplot with the kids afraid of a ghost. Okay, and that's 30 minutes of the movie specifically focused on the ghost. Nothing else. And what's weird about this movie is he's not really home alone. He's got his his sister with him. Yes, she's trapped in a basement behind a safe, but she's still there. What made it the first one kind of scary, not legit scary because it was a freaking comedy for God's sakes, but what made us fear for the main character, fear for Kevin, is the fact that he was alone, that we knew he was in complete isolation with these two goons, so it was him versus the two goons. That's kind of gone in this movie because guess what? His sister's with him. If you ever, for some reason, want to watch this movie, the only way I can suggest this will be good is get a drinking game going with your buddies. Get four or five of your friends, sit down, watch this movie. Get a drinking game. For every time the word ghost is said, you take a shot. <laughs> guess what? You're not going to remember the third act, but guess what? <laughs> ah, that's going to be for the best. Now, earlier in the review, I said there was something that I actually kind of liked in the movie. Um, there's this weird character. He's very weird, but um, he's the gamer that uh, the main character plays with. Uh, he's an older guy. He's by himself. He, he's in college. The reason why I liked him is because he was the only character to kind of draw some form of emotion because he said he was alone for the holidays. Very cheap, very cheap stuff. It, it resonated towards me because he was alone for the holidays. He couldn't afford it. He couldn't afford going to uh, his family's place because he's away for college. So every time he was on screen, I actually kind of smiled. And uh, when he was calling his parents, the main character's parents, warning that he's in trouble, this is a scene I kind of smiled at, where every time he tried to explain what was going on, it seemed like he was a pedophile and had the kids kind of in his basement and locked away and shit like that. I found that kind of funny because, like, you see, it's not forced, because he's literally explaining what's going on at hand, but it sounds like he's the freak, and he's got the kids locked away. So I thought that was kind of funny. I'm going to give this movie one out of five stars. The, the Literally, the gamer saved the movie for me. Like, even though he's only in the movie for, like, ten minutes. I have a Twitter, Instagram, Gumps underscore videos. Go follow me there for the latest news and updates on my channel. Guys, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. I'll crap later and goodbye.